Hello, this is Riding with Rhea. Welcome back to my channel, or welcome if you are new here. I just arrived at the yard and the plan today is to see Woody. I really want to clean out um, some things in my box, do some hand grazing while it's still light and then head over to Duke. I'm really sorry there wasn't a YouTube video last week. I just, I literally did not have time. I prioritise seeing Woody in the evenings because I think it's really important that he gets out of his box. But to do Woody and Duke is like hours out of my day because Duke is so much further away. And I didn't see Duke all week yesterday until, all week until yesterday so I just I just didn't have any time to film but um I'm back we're gonna see Woody I've got a couple of updates on him it's been quite a difficult week and then we're gonna go and see Duke and I'm gonna school in the indoor school for the first time today at his new yard so let's get going I'm just here grazing with Woody and whilst he eats I'm going to give you a little update on where we got to this week so obviously the clocks went back um, I think it was last Sunday um, and that means that it gets dark around like 5 p.m which makes it really hard to get down here in the light and I had been grazing him before like at dusk but the weather's really turned as well so if you imagine I'm coming down it's like pitch black it's windy it's wet it's raining like there's no way that I can graze a horse who's been on box rest in the dark in the rain in the wind it's just not possible and so I had a bit of a moment where I also chatted to my um coat and he's not really liking the pen which I don't blame him it's a horrible little space he's only been out there he's been out there for the best part of a year it's not very pleasant and the whole point of it was for his mental health and so it just felt like it wasn't working anymore so anyway we'd always said that when my vet came up in November for whatever reason to the yard to see a horse or something that we would have a chat about Woody and how he's getting on and decide whether or not we would try and do the last check-in in December or whether we would try and push it to January. Um, and so it just so happened that 1st of November came and I was up at the yard seeing Woody and my vet was here seeing another horse. So I said, oh, can I grab you for a few minutes before you go? And she was like, yeah, of course. I'm just gonna swap arms because I'm getting tired. So she was like, yeah, of course, no problem. So we started chatting and I said, look, this is where we're at. I said, it's really hard to graze him um, at the moment because I have to be here so late and he's not loving the pen. We think we want to stop the pen. And then I kind of just had a conversation with her about like welfare and I was like, you know, is this okay? Like he's in so much and I really worry. I hate that he can't go out and I hate that he can't hand graze. And she basically reassured me that like we're doing the right thing, that she's never come to the yard and thought that he looked distressed or thought that he looked uncomfortable in his stable. And obviously nobody wants this for their horse, but this is the only option we have. We don't have the option of turning him away for a year with this injury. Um, it has to be box rest. So. She said, look, just hunker down for one more month um, and let me come back in, in December and do the final check-in. And she also reminded me that the surgeon who did Woody's re-MRI um, was actually relatively positive about its ability to heal. He said, you know, is healing, it's just taking a long time. Um, and although my actual vet is possibly not as optimistic as that about its ability to heal and him to come back, she did say, you know, you might get the horse you had before back. And that was like a real line that kind of hit me like a train because I've been very much um, in the mindset of like almost certain retirement. So yes, yeah, so that's where we are. Obviously it's a Sunday now, so I'm here in the middle of the day, just hand grazing. It's really quiet. There's hardly anyone around, which suits Woody better when it's so quiet. He can just relax and not worry about lots of things going on. So I'm gonna try and hand graze as much as possible, but I've kind of tried to take the pressure off myself. And on the nights when I can't get down here in the light, we go in the school, we wander around, we sniff things um, and we do some light walking. And so he gets out of his box every single day. And my coach is also gonna walk him around for 10 to 15 minutes when she's here during the day. So he goes out twice. Um, so it's like the equivalent of being in the pen. So I feel a lot better. But it was a really tough week last week you know that day he was so stressed he didn't want to be out he didn't want to be he wasn't himself he wasn't cuddly he didn't want to talk to me like you know talk to me and it just felt like it was one of the first times i'd felt like i was really struggling with it all um so yeah one more month and actually by the time you watch this video we will almost be two weeks into november so we just got to make it to december and then see where we are at um, and i'm still very much 50 50 about the whole thing i'm still not massively convinced he'll come back into work um but you know we haven't trusted him up we haven't looked at him 
other than in walk around like what I'm doing now so it's hard to say but I don't know I hope against hope against hope that he can but I'm not sure that it won't be retirement so we'll just have to wait and see until November and when we get there I think we'll know that we've really done absolutely everything that we possibly could um, and he has been amazing I mean the fact that I'm stood here in a head collar it is a little bit windy and the fact that he's been on box rest for such a long time and he's just happily grazing like what a horse what an absolute dream boat I mean I know that you couldn't have you could call this year anything but lucky but god I feel so lucky to have him he's amazing lots of love for you Mr Woods anyway we're gonna keep hand grazing and then um, we shall go and see Mr Duke After I left the yard with Woody, the weather absolutely started tipping it down. So I've brought Duke into this solarium area. It's really close to the tack room, so it makes it really easy to groom and tack up here. And you'll see after that we also hang out here and warm him up under the solarium while I clean tack. So yeah, really lovely little spot and so nice to hang out with another cuddly and friendly horse like Duke. Gentle giant. I've had questions before about tacking him up because he's so tall. Um, so I'll show you how he puts his bridle on. This day made me laugh because he dropped his head in such an exaggerated way. But he does do that. He'll drop his head for you to put the bridle on. He's a very sweet boy. So actually, it's not, it's not as difficult as it might seem with a horse of his size. Duke. Ooh, a bit better. I had some really great feedback the last time I showed you a schooling session about um, doing the whole session and showing you time lapses when I wanted to move forward onto something else so you could see exactly what we were doing. So I'm going to take that approach today. You missed the first five minutes because I had my pivo in the corner instead of where it is now and for some reason it just kept turning to the wall. I don't know. I've had a little break from using my Pivo and I know that every now and again it'll have an update where something weird happens. So anyway, I had to move it. So you missed the first five minutes where we walked, but we got straight into trotting. I actually feel really good about where our walk and trot is getting now. Where I feel less good is the canter. In general, I find his canter very big and because he is not as strong as he normally would be, he had a little bit of time off he is not as balanced as he could be and so sometimes I feel as though he's sort of rocking me back and forward it's taking me a lot to get used to such a big movement and he has opinions he's a warm blood and so anyway I was chatting to the owner of this yard who's also a show jumper and she recommended that rather than doing loads and loads of warm-up in walk and trot and then waiting until he was tired to do a canter to get the canter in early so what I did was just trotted him round both reins, did a couple of bends, some circles, some changes of rein, and as you can see, he actually was looking pretty good from pretty early on. I mean, I'm really, really proud of this. If you remember watching a couple of weeks ago where we were when I first sat on Duke, it was completely different. I've worked really hard in the past month on my position, bringing my leg further back, rising a little bit more from my thighs, etc. So I actually felt like we were getting there pretty quickly, um, so I moved straight onto the canter, which I'll show you now because it was less nice. <laughs> So again, a lovely trot coming down the long side. I'm going to come round the corner and then ask for canter as we go back to the track. That canter transition was actually very, felt very nice to me, but actually when you look at it on him, you can see that there is just not enough impulsion coming from behind. I should have been braver. I should have been pushing him forward more. Um, as you can see, he breaks into trot. He's also not being very straight. I don't have a huge amount of contact with my hands because I wanted him to hold himself. But all that, that is, all that that's causing is him to not be straight. He's falling out through the outside shoulder and it's just all going a bit wrong. 
and this is something I brought up with my coach uh, in our lesson, which happened a few days after this. And we had a really, really positive lesson where we started working on a diamond. So we did walk and trot on a diamond, focused on keeping that outside shoulder in, and then we brought canter in. And although it's not perfect, it's certainly better than it was in this particular um, moment. There is a particular moment in canter where it went really wrong and it felt it felt really off to me and it wasn't until I watched the video back that um, I realised what had happened and I actually have a perspective on this at the end of the um, at the end of this session where I, I, I'm walking around warming down and I talk, talk you through it from a vlogging point of view so I'm not going to talk through it now but I'll just show you that clip and then we'll move on to the pole work that we do. So at the far end of the school in the corner is where it all goes wrong. He's broken out of canter, I push him back into canter. I'm like, what is going on? Why is he doing that? Freaking out a little bit. Bring myself back to walk and then I'm like, you've got to push him back up into trot, get the gear sorted. The trot is actually very nice, but I felt a bit like what just happened. And so after we did, we kind of worked on trot poles and things after that. But then afterwards I asked the instructor who was on the yard to just come and have a look to make sure there wasn't anything wrong, like he wasn't sore or anything. Just give me a second perspective from the ground. But let's go into the trot poles. And again, sorry about the pivot, she's having a bit of a dodgy day and I'm not sure why she wasn't able to track us. I do find that when I take a pivot in a new arena, it takes me a minute to figure out the best place for it because every different arena has different lighting setup, different shadows, and it can really affect how it tracks you. But yeah, these poles were already out in the arena and it might seem like a really small thing, but I was like, oh, am I going to do this by myself without an instructor? And I decided I was. And you know, we're not, you know, we don't look perfect. He's not in a perfect outline going over the poles, but it was something a little bit different and a little bit fun. And it is a goal of mine to take him to a pole work clinic at the yard where I keep Woody. Um, so once I get a bit more confident with that canter, I would like to do that. And his owner has explicitly said to me that he's going to get me jumping 110 and above, which is what he does with Duke. Duke is a show jumper. And I'm a bit like, if you know me at all, anything above like 80, 90, and I'm like, Ugh. but I have to say it all looks very small on Duke. So perhaps he can bring my confidence back. I think the only thing I'm worried about at this point is him jumping me off because if he's very expressive when he jumps, then I might just come out the side door. But I was really pleased with this and I am hoping that when he's a little bit fitter, we can bring jumping into our lessons. So I carried this on for another few minutes, but I didn't want to end the lesson on the canter that I had uh, that we saw earlier. So what I did actually was stop the pivo, go and grab the coach who was on the yard, get her to look at my canter on both reins and tell me if she thought anything was wrong. I didn't film that, but what I did film was my reaction afterwards. So let's skip straight to that now. So we're just warming down now. And um, just at the end there, one thing I didn't record was that I got uh, the yard owner to just come in and have a little look of our canter because to me it just felt really off, it felt really terrible and um, I wasn't sure whether it was just me like, not being brave enough or whether it was like him, he was sore or something. So I got her to just come and have a watch and actually I think it's a little combination of like me needing to be braver and pushing forward. Um, He's obviously like the biggest horse I've ever ridden and the canter, especially when he's a little bit on the weaker side, it does just feel very, very big and long and I think I get a bit frightened. So I need to be braver and really just push him forward and hold him together in the contact so that he can't just throw me around. Um, but we also just need to do that for a little while and then see where we get to. Because um, the saddle isn't perfect and he is, he is getting stronger. So when he's building up his muscle he is going to change shape a little bit but otherwise I feel like I'm just starting to get the hang of him which is nice we're getting there um, and there's a pole work clinic in December at my yard that I would really like to take him to and the owner says I can so that's exciting back at the barn now I took Duke's tack off quickly and popped him under the solarium lights which I'll turn on in a moment there's a hot tap at this yard which I have I've never been at a yard with a hot tap before it is like so exciting to me so just being able to wash him off with hot water was really nice and I'm sure nice for him and then I just popped the lights on for a five to ten minutes whilst I um, cleaned his tack so that he could have a nice warm up and dry off after that little moment in the rain going down to the arena isn't he lucky five star treatment for Mr Duke back with Woody. 
It's basically on the way home for me from Duke, so I thought I may as well come and visit him for a little bit, bring him out again. Look at that lovely sunset. He really wants to go over there because that's where the long grass is, but I don't let him go there every day because he gets too excited. <laughs> so we're just gonna stay here, Mr. Woods. dinner time is it <laughs> there we go good boy well that is it Woody's having dinner we've ridden duke we've hand grazed it's all good thank you so much for watching this week's video. Hope you enjoyed it. They're not quite the production values of my last video with Canaan, but they are, can't all be like that, can they? And um, yeah, we will see you next week where we are well and getting truly into the wintry spirit now. Things are getting cold and cozy. So we will see you then next Friday at 4pm UK time. Bye for now.